of the uh, gas stoves out there would be required to be modified, and that means 50% would not be required to be modified. Can you tell us what you meant by that? Yes, I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to do that because this is really the crux of, of what we're talking about. So what, the, what we do is we look at what the Department of Energy does is it takes all the manual, you know, we've got a lot of appliances. And so we take all of the materials that the companies give us with regards to the different components that they have within their, ga their ga gas or electric stove, we're talking about this now. And we have, and we can figure out from lo looking at what elements they have with the burner and the grates and everything else, we can figure out, give, at least give an estimate of what their efficiency is. And so when, when we did that, we found out that 50% of those, which are really the entry-level gas stoves, those are the ones that, that uh, immediately already have uh, the efficiency that we would be putting in with the with the proposed rule. The other 50% are the ones that we have to, that are the ones that don't look like that they uh, would be able to uh, pass the rule because of different features, whether that be the down venting or things like that. But let me just say, there's, and because it goes back to this 96%, we take those that, are the, that appear to be the least efficient and we test those to see if they actually are the, uh, inefficient. So and, thank you, so are you saying that 50% of the gas stoves that are out there today uh -huh. in American kitchens would have to be modified in some way? No, what, no. Thank you for asking that question. No. What it means is that the products that come on the market three years from now would have to have that efficiency. Okay. I'm thank, sorry. Th thank no, you. Thank you for clarifying that. Can, can you describe the Department of Energy's authority for establishing energy efficiency standards? And then more specifically, what can they do and what they what can they not do when evaluating products that are available on the market? So by the, thank you for that question. Uh, EPCA, uh, passed by Congress in 75, uh, required us to, uh, to basically determine, um, to develop rules uh, which would uh, look at the efficiency of appliances and look to see if we could make them more efficient while also being cost effective to the consumer. And so we have seven different, uh, stat, st seven different factors. I could go into these, but probably not time. Seven different factors that we use uh, to, to think about what that rule should, should, um, uh, should be set upon. And so that's where I talk about efficiency, but also consumer, uh, uh, consumer uh, uh, affordability. Wow, friends, I have exciting news to share with you this evening. Many Americans could end up receiving several thousands of dollars in financial relief very soon. Under this new proposal, families will qualify for either a one-time lump sum payment or smaller monthly checks, but the amount would depend on your income. My dear friends, please do make sure that you watch until the end of this video to learn more about this. Also, in three days, I will be announcing more winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you'd like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, my friends, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. Senator Michael Benet wants people to remember that the child tax credit has historically not been a controversial program. The Democrat from Colorado is scheduled to chair a subcommittee hearing this week which is focused on the tax credits history and looking at how Congress could perhaps reach a consensus on expanding it once more. For the majority of the quarter century that it has been on the books, the child tax credit has significant support from both parties. After it was first implemented in 1997, Congress repeatedly increased and expanded the credit to assist more American families under administrations and congressional majorities of both parties. But the bipartisan support on the issue shifted in 2017 when Republicans narrowly passed massive tax cut legislation promoted by the former president. Although the measure doubled the amount of the credit to $2,000, 
The overall bill was opposed by Democrats, who balked at the provisions, which primarily benefited wealthier Americans. Four years later, Democrats single-handedly passed a dramatic expansion of the credit as part of their crisis relief package. President Biden then touted the benefits of the enhanced credit on the campaign trail, which expired at the end of 2021, and so the policy became. More associated with Democrats, the fact that Republicans not only oppose the overall bill, but also the specific provision granting full refundability for the expanded child tax credit, only cemented the perception. But even so, Democrats still tout the results of the expanded child tax credit. In the six months that it was in effect, from July through December of 2021. The credit reached more than 60 million U.S. children. Because the refundability made the credit newly available to many households that were too poor to pay income taxes, it also helped lift more than three million children out of poverty. Senator Benet said he did not believe that providing families with roughly an additional $10 per day would lead parents to quit their jobs. Recently proposed legislation from Representatives Rosa DeLauro, Susan Delbean, and Richie Torres would restore the monthly payments and expand eligibility for the credits, while also adding a $2,000 baby bonus for newborn children. Under this new bill, families will receive $3,600 per year for each child under the age of six. While also receiving three thousand dollars per year for each child ages six through seventeen, the same structure that had been implemented in 2021, according to the most recent data from the Federal Student Aid Data Center, 43.6 million people have outstanding federal student loans. For those who are struggling to manage their payments, loan forgiveness can seem like a dream come true. The White House released data today, showing the number of student bars in each state who were eligible for automatic loan relief under the one-time payment adjustment for income-driven repayment plans. Last Friday, the Education Department notified 804,000 student loan bars that they will have their student loan debt discharged, resulting in the elimination. Of 39 billion dollars of such loans, the one-time payment adjustment, which was announced last year, counts certain months that were previously ineligible for student loan forgiveness under the income-driven repayment plans. According to federal student aid, about 3.6 million student loan bars will receive at least three years of credit towards loan discharge as a result of this adjustment. The one-time payment adjustment helps to reverse some of the damage caused by loan servicers that did not properly track deferments or steered borrowers to forbearance instead of income-driven repayment plans that would have counted towards years of payment. The Education Department has confirmed that student loan borrowers that have been in repayment for 20 to 25 years will start to see their debt discharged. And receive notices in the coming weeks. All other federal student loan bars will see the adjustment applied in 2024. James Caval, the Under Secretary at the Education Department, said in a recent statement, "Our goal is to provide debt relief to bars. We are recognizing that far too many student loan bars are left with unaffordable, unreasonable, and unacceptable debts." So, dear friends, what are your thoughts about forgiving student loans? Please let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Well, my beautiful and most amazing friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for today. My dear friends, thank you so much for joining me here and for being part of this community. To say thank you and to show my appreciation. I will be announcing several winners this coming Friday for the Walmart gift card giveaway. My dear friends, if you'd like to enter these giveaways, 
All you have to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, friends, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed day.